اللهم يا من جعل انت السحر ابتلاء فانت برحمتك لن تنسانا وانت جلالك الذي خلقت له الدواء فلكل داء دواء الحمد لله الولي المتقين حق من عبد واكرم من سئل والصلاه والسلام على اشرف الانبياء سراجا منيرا اما بعد الحمد لله ابدن podcast previously with this young man but it was not looking good it was the blade and a lot of things went to it so i had to delete that postcard so we're redoing it but we're going to be quick and short inshallah assalamu alaikum how are you alhamdulillah it's been a while since we met and sat and spoke even not on sitting and spoke speaking in the podcast just general speaking let's start i remember you told me uh, your house movement and you start having pains and everything and then can you start just from the beginning and quick and brief just give the details where it's fascinating okay, yeah so, uh, this probably started maybe around 2020 maybe and around uh, september october time and uh, basically uh, at home everyone they started getting a lot of experiences so like um, footsteps um, doors opening closing by themselves and bad dreams and uh, tell me about the doors opening footsteps who was experiencing it uh, so i everyone experienced everybody in the house experienced their own uh, different things. ways what i experienced was uh, one night i was sleeping and um, it was um, halloween night i think in 2020 um, and I, do you celebrate halloween was no i don't know no. okay. so th- it was just a normal day i was it was uh, i was watching um, football boxing at night and then i went to sleep and i think i was asleep for maybe about Uh, 10 to 15 minutes me sleep and i felt something grab my leg hands grab like my legs and i've had this feeling before many times pull you or just, just grab just your leg grab, like squeeze like two hands squeeze my legs and and um, i've had that feeling before but i've always kind of just turned around and gone to sleep but this time for some reason um i was scared when when i got grabbed so and um, what happened was i um as soon as i got grabbed um i i got scared so i pulled I got my phone and I started scrolling on my phone texting my friend because if I focus on my phone whatever it is in the room I don't have to worry about it that's good and then um I was just, so you just you just wanted to go and focus on your phone to change the in, yeah, yeah. the attention from so the worry about whatever yeah 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 so, so when you were grabbed you thought there was something in there I knew straight away so in my heart everything how did you know that because I, was, I remember you told me you didn't know what was going on so initially we didn't know what was going on but um we've had um kind of a few things going on at home with like my dad and stuff like that so um he yeah you know he um one time my sister was um kind of studying for her exams or something she had a whiteboard studying on and he came in the room and he started um, he said to her, if you look at these symbols look at what i'm about to show you you'll get a good grades and then all of a sudden he said he said um in one corner he wrote allah and in, in the other corner he wanted to write muhammad but he said he didn't know the spelling so he started drawing some something random like a symbol and then i think what happened was he realized what he had done like he realized that he exposed himself rubbed it out and then he went out and then that's when my sister told my mom and uh, told, told me and then from there it's kind of like we started keeping an eye, an eye out for things for your dad for just generally everything that was going on out the footsteps stuff like that kind of started linking in that he was doing it so okay your dad was doing the magic yeah. Yeah. Tell me more about it. Uh, so now you've discovered this is what he was doing writing. Yeah. That's the first incident, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, tell me the second incident and Yeah, so the second incident was kind of like with my mom and um, she has said that previously when she has gone to sleep she has um, experienced um um someone like him and my dad um drawing something on her back with a finger like a symbol and um, many times it's happened before but she's never really paid attention to it but that day with my sister it happened we always keep an eye out for her so one time my mom said it was maybe like 3 o'clock in the morning or something like that and um, she was sleeping and she felt some something drawing on her back but this time she was wide awake as well straight away and then as um he's drawing on the back it's like a circle with a star and some writing in it that's what she said to me and then from there she started um, uh, reciting quran and stuff like that and then the symbol that he had drawn started burning and then he got up who started reciting quran no. okay so these symbols in arabic we call them sihrul talasim black magic of symbols so if he's drawing on your mom then he knows what he's doing 
Yeah, he knows what he's doing. He's either a magician, he's training to become a magician, or he's a small magician. Allah knows best. And then what happened when he st- drew this symbol? After my mum started reciting Quran, and then he quickly got up, like as if, as if, like it backfired. It backfired, and then what he did was when he got up, he turned the light on, looking to see if my mum was awake. Like, why did that happen? And my mum was pretending she was sleeping. She was reciting, isn't it? When he was drawing, while she was reciting, it started burning, like it burning, and then when it was burning, it's like I who was burning? Your mum was, bur- she was, bur- the, the symbol was burning. That, that had been drawn, but then he got. Uh, what happened was she said that when he, uh, when it had backfired, he looked out the window and down as if like something left. Something left the room. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And then he turned the light on to see if my mum was awake or not, and she was pretending that like she was sleeping. Up and after that was. My mum said that a few times when she would go in the bathroom, um, like as in just to use the bathroom, that symbol will start burning. That, okay, subhanAllah. Every time she goes in the bathroom and the symbol is still burning. Yeah, yeah, that exact symbol will start burning every time she go in the bathroom. SubhanAllah. This is why it's very important. It's very important if you see an evil person or the person who does magic to you or anything that you seek refuge from Allah. Look, just your mum seeking refuge from Allah, wherever was there, fleed. That's why your dad was looking outside the window to check. Where is he going? Where is my friend, my partner, the one who was helping me, gone? Do you understand? And the way he looks now, if every time your mama goes to the toilet and he burns, whatever he's have, it comes from the toilet. He's seeking help, the jinns from the toilet. And then what happened after that? Did it disappear or is still? So, so then what happened after that is yeah. when the burning sensation went away after, afterwards she said it was just having times, it went away and then after that everyone started having experience then i had my experience where something grabbed me and then um, i looked up and then the whole door opened like the whole entire door opened and closed itself in the night what time is it this was maybe one i remember exactly it was probably about one thirty-two in the night no your father is doing something to your sister and your father has done something to your mom physically uh, seher black magic What's next? Did your mom stay with him in the same bedroom or? Then what happened was my mom, um, uh, she moved um, from that room. Because she said that in that room, it wasn't just a finger. It was, uh, she uh, she uh, had sleep paralysis in the room where something uh, came and shook the whole bed. The whole bed moved Stop. and um, something grabbed her leg and her leg was hurting as well for a few days. She moved downstairs now. That is when your dad is there or when your dad is not there. Yeah, she feels these experience when your dad is there. SubhanAllah. We ask Allah to protect us having any uh, father or mother as a magician or daughters or, s- or um, sons. I ask Allah to make it easy for you because it's a very traumatic experience. You know, the person who you trust doing this. Yeah, it's madness, isn't it? Difficult. Yeah, it is. Because some people take it differently. For me, when I had my experience, um, I couldn't sleep for like um, when you know that your dad is behind it yeah and even generally like it wasn't even just that it was like um some people take things differently for me when i had my experience i i could only sleep after eight nine o'clock because i was always scared something was going to come get me all right like something was gonna <sighs> but now i'm fine though. but okay you were scared you didn't know what was going to come and get you isn't it and how did you came to know now this is gin this is magic this is because you were scared yeah, but did you know why you were scared? So I knew you were scared because it was my, obviously my dad doing it. Yes. But then it was knowing that that it, what it is. Yeah, knowing that what it is, and it it started bothering me a lot. Like yeah. several for six seven months, I couldn't sleep. Right. I, I always had a feeling that something was going to come get. So I would, me and my brother used to share the same room. Right. I used to sleep on one bed. I used to sleep on one. Right. And then um, I used to keep the light on mm-hmm. fully. Uh, he didn't. He didn't like that because he. I don't think he had any experiences at the time. Mm-hmm. So he would. He kind of wasn't. Wasn't really believing it mm-hmm. as much. Mm-hmm. One night, um, it was maybe five o'clock in the morning. It was lockdown, so sleeping. We were sleeping late and stuff. So, um, we were in the room together, and something came up to the door and banged on the door like three, four times, and then we heard footsteps walking away. And we opened the door. No one was there. Mm-hmm. From that, then when that happened, I asked my brother. I was like, "Do you believe it now?" And he was like, "Yeah, he does." And it was a lot of experiences that everyone was having. But what made you believe it's jinns? Because you had this cloud surrounding your head, these thoughts. What is it? What is it? What is it? Does that make sense? What, tell me that experience. Because you know now, dad is behind something, but what is he behind it? 
Someone comes and, and open the doors, footsteps and everything because you don't have Islamic religion. So you might think, what's going on? Yeah. Does that make sense? Is it my mind playing? Am I going crazy? Because that's what the, the other people will say, isn't it? So, so, so what, what happened with that was then, um, um, I had a friend who I was very close friends with. And um, in lockdown, I, I used to go to his house maybe every single day. Um, and when I mean, these experiences were happening, I would tell him, I would like, because every day was a new experience. Mm. I'd be like, today this happened, that happened, this happened, this experience, my sister had this experience, my mum had this experience. And he would, he kind of was, um, in the start, he would kind of, he would just brush it off like, yeah, forget it, whatever. And then eventually he was like, he doesn't believe in it. Um, he thinks it's all in your head and stuff like that. Mm. And I, was, I said to myself, I was like, it can be in my head, but how can it be in the head of everybody? In everybody in your own house? Yes, in your, simultaneous, in your own house, yeah. And then from there, I kind of like, I started um, getting a bit depressed as well. And then um, I cut him off and... Was he a Muslim? What is he? Atheist? His family uh, were Muslim, but he was um, atheist. He okay, he doesn't believe. That's the reason. Is brushing it off because you see when you don't believe you you have you 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 what do I say when you don't believe you represent your case in your mind and that's shaitan doing that nothing exists the creator doesn't exist everything is hallucination or it's in your mind how can that be yeah exactly and then yeah. from there I, mm. I started getting depressed and and um, I just started praying to Allah and then. Um, he he gave me new friends, better friends, practicing. Alhamdulillah. And um, since then, it's been about two years now. And then they, they inform you, this is this, is this. Is. You said when you meet this atheist man and you've been telling this guy, you met him where? In No, me, me, and, me and him, were we met maybe a few years ago. Um, I met him through my brother. Okay. Um, and um, we met and then we just became friends. Like, okay. We... we, we so we had a lot of things in common. Also. Okay, and where did you in college, in university? I think it was I was in I was in third year university. Yeah. Okay, so you, okay, you met him in university. University. So you said these atheists, this guy atheist. You used to visit him. You used to go to him, isn't it? And you used to speak to him. You used to open up. And you said every day there's a new experience. Can you elaborate these experiences? Yeah, so uh, as in uh, what experiences? Yes. So um, the experience I had was, you know, with the, my someone, someone grabbing my leg and the door opening. Mm -hmm. So that was my experience. And then after that, it was, uh, you could hear footsteps in the house. Mm -hmm. um, what about your mom? What about your dad, um, your brother, your sister? Sister, she had experiences where she said one, one, uh, one time she was sleeping that night and um, she woke up at three o'clock. You know, when you just wake up to... Uh, to turn over to the other side. Yeah. She heard stuff speaking in her room, like in a different language, in deep voices. And when she read Ayat al-Kursi, when she said the last word, she heard them run out of the room, through the door, down the stairs. Mm, that's the power of Ayat al-Kursi, subhanAllah. And we also have like a, a pet um, animal at home as well. And what is it? Rabbit, rabbit okay. They used to act um, very weird. Sometimes they used to just stare at the door, like someone standing there and um, um, you see these animals, Allah has opened their eyes so they can see. So if you have an animal in your house and start uh, acting up, you should know that your house is an issue in your house. Definitely. Yeah, uh, This is an experience for you and for whoever is going to view it. Uh, because I know so many people, example is recently somebody gave me a buzz and say that your cat always go behind the cupboard and start smelling and scratching and doing crazy stuff. Now for your case is a rabbit. They stare where? They stare at the door as if someone is standing there. Yeah, like 30 minutes. Yeah, the, the, yeah. They're not even moving like uh, like an inch, just staring. They're afraid, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Afraid, yeah. Mm. And then uh, there was another experience that we had was, um, this was probably one of the very first ones experiences. Um, this was before we, we knew about our dad and stuff. And, uh, my sister said um, she woke up to pray Fajr and she could hear um, someone in the kitchen like, breaking the plates mm -hmm. and the uh, rabbit used to be up downstairs at the time in the room in the cage and then you could hear on the wooden floor someone scratching so they thought the rabbit got out of the cage and the rabbit's scratching and whatever mm -hmm. they went downstairs and the, the rabbit was in the cage in the corner scared as if someone was there mm -hmm. and the plates and everything was down the plates were fine there was no no broken plates but you could hear someone breaking them oh, right. Subhanallah. and then and what, the thing that was broken was the oven uh, the glass was smashed. Oh, the, oh, the oven. Yeah. Mm, subhanallah. Subhanallah. May Allah make it easy. 
as if this is crazy. So, and then you see, when you don't have the knowledge of Islam, you'll flee from the house. You'll definitely flee. Or you'll start thinking, seeking mental health issue. Uh, but alhamdulillah for Islam, Allah has told us there's these entities and there's ways to deal with them. A very simple example now, your sister and your mom. Your mom seek refuge and the star, or the symbols your dad was drawing start burning. And your sister... Uh, kursi, and whatever was there disappeared. This is the way forward. Yani you should, one should never fear. If you hear a movement, you just go out. Go out and read. And that's it. And everything is, uh, alhamdulillah, sorted by Allah Rabbul Izzah because we have one of the most highest weapon in the world, which is Quran, against the unseen entity. Just read and that's it. Regular reading. Subhanallah. Now you've experienced the kitchen. You've experienced a lot of things. Tell me about your dad. Uh, now you know your dad is this. This is he's behind it. All our house haunted. So then after we kind of um, figure out that he's behind it, we started paying attention to his behavior. Mm -hmm. How used to uh, his pattern. His pattern. So his pattern was pretty. It was pretty. Um, Kind of similar every day it was usually he used to say he has sleeping problems and that's what he used to say which it wasn't true mm. um so what he used to do was he used to come home um at maybe 12 one o'clock in the night in the night and it, what, what job was it does he do um, he's a ta taxi taxi daughter okay so he'd come home at maybe 12 one o'clock and everyone is sleeping and and the pattern and at the time we used to stay awake so his pattern was his bedroom is right next to the bathroom like connected to the bathroom so probably up until Fajr he'll probably um, he'll be in his room for 20 minutes 30 minutes he'll go into the bathroom then he'll come out go into the bathroom so all night he's going in the bathroom coming out all night does he, does he have any disease that you can think of urine disease uh, stomach no. problem nothing. Nothing, nothing he's absolutely sound absolutely. but he keeps on going to the toilet yeah, this is madness. He's keep. This is like I said in the beginning. Your mom goes to the toilet and she feels the sensation of burning. Meaning, your dad seek refu seeks help from the devil from the toilet. Yeah. yeah. And then, then it was a, a thing where, like, we also in our back garden we had a tree. Mm -hmm. and the tree was very. It was an unusual tree. It was very big, covered like so. In in our alley, uh, the alleyway that we live in, everyone house is they have normal trees, but our tree is overgrown. It's on the walls. Um, it, it's very like it, it didn't look right and then I don't it looked a bit like haunted it was, it was tree, that tree that tree and we we kind of at the time we we, we just cut it off because we got it you cut, oh you cut the tree who who, who made that decision uh, at the time because um, um, I think it was me and my mom we made that decision at the time okay you to cut it off Right. When you cut that tree, this is your problem started after cutting the tree. No, no. Oh, all right. okay. Okay. So the problem was there. Yeah. Oh, okay. So then we kind of cut it off because it, uh, it just it looked very uh, haunted. You, you thought that maybe there's something's yeah. there. Maybe the, your dad. Maybe somebody's doing something. Yeah. Have you found any nails in the tree or tawis in the tree? We, we didn't find nails in the tree, but uh, my mom found uh, in the alleyway. She found. Um, she went to throw the uh, bins. Uh, the uh, rubbish in the bins, and she saw pieces of the Quran, like um, like. Um, tiny tiny pieces like burn so she spent half an hour picking them all up subhanallah and, um, we found stuff like that there was also rats in the uh, alleyway um, and um, rats dead live uh, alive uh, alive but what, one time what happened was um, I had pain in my shoulder very bad mm. very bad I couldn't move from the uh, the pain uh, from the bed I couldn't move and it was in my right shoulder and um, my mom said that at that same time there was a rat in the alleyway that that's right arm, the right shoulder was broken. Stuck for the itself on the on the floor. Mm -hmm. And no cat would eat it. There was cats as well, they wouldn't eat that rat. Yeah. And they are similar at the same time. Yeah, they used rat. I think I have put a video before. They use rat, they use cat, they use all sorts of animal yeah. to do black magic. Do you understand? What happened to the rat then? I don't know. I think after it had just died uh, and then I was fine after it had it was gone i was fine my shoulders perfectly mm, subhanallah and, um, um, yeah and there was also another thing um, that happened basically we used to live in pakistan from maybe like 2003 till 2007 for mm, mm. and then one day um this was um, i think in winter how old are you then i was probably like 
six, seven years old. I remember it. Oh, okay, okay. And then um, it was winter time, and in Pakistan, it gets very cold in the winter. Mm -hmm. And um, we were um, just we were, had woken up after Fajr, and um, there was this man. Um, he, um, you could see him in the in the distance coming through the drive, and he was very he was a big man, um, and um, he 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 had a shirt on. It was very cold, and he was walking in the towards our house, and he wasn't blinking. He had his eyes wide open. He didn't blink wide, and he was smiling in a very creepy way. Looking at who? Just walking in the house, like from the distance, like as if he's not looking at anyone. Mm. And then there was a dog as well, and the dog was trying to attack it, but the dog was scared as well at the same time. So the dog wouldn't physically. What the sort of color of the dog? Yeah, and he still walked in, and then as he's walking in, he's looking at my mom, and we had closed the the door, you know, see through door. We had closed it. And then the worker came and he took the man and he took him out. And then my mum asked the worker as well, he was like, who's that man? And the worker had said that he didn't seem like he was a human being. That's what the worker had said. So we didn't really much of it. But recently when these problems at home started. Yeah, but how, the worker went with him. Yeah, took him out of the house to because he had come into the into the garden area. Because yeah. the houses in Pakistan are open. Yeah, but, but how, how, he took him out yeah, and he told him to get out. Yeah, he, he grabbed him and he said to him, get out, and he had left. All right, and okay. What, at the time, we didn't think much of it. We thought maybe someone who's mentally ill or whatever. All right, all right, okay. And um, recently when these... And the worker says he, he's, 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 he doesn't seem to be human. Human being. seems like he was um, a different uh, creature. Yeah, so we didn't really think much of it. We thought maybe he's, he's got a mental issue or whatever. The worker... I don't know, my mum, she just thought oh, maybe just there's someone oh, right, okay. issue. And then recently when these problems have started, my mum kept seeing that man in the dream, uh, dreams. Like sometimes he'd be very small, sometimes he'd be very big. So she had kept seeing him. So um, and that happened maybe in 2003 and this happened in 2020. So 17 years, it's not, it's not like my mum's thinking about that man. And she but she sees, she yeah, I'll explain. Sometimes mm. small, sometimes big. Yeah. So when he's big, is when she's not engaging in dhikr. Yeah. She's not reading, she's not doing adhkar, and or she's getting in any sins, then the, the whatever is there grows big. Yeah. But when she's engaged in dhikr and everything and everything, whatever is there, it goes small. It's just like putting a uh, candle. If you leave the candle like that, it stays like that. Does that make sense? But if you put fire on it, it slowly, slowly yes. demise. Yes, it goes. It yes. goes away. Yes. So whenever you are engaged in dhikr, meaning reading Quran, reading salahs, and doing adhka, um, uh, tasbih, all this, if there is a jinn, you will see in the dream, Allah knows best, that whatever is there, he goes either slim or demise. It goes slowly, slowly, slowly. It goes very small. We have this in the hadith. Oh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, when the two individuals meet, the qareem talk to each other. When they talk, one will say, why are you becoming so slim? And, and the other one will say, this man, this man is, he doesn't, he doesn't stop. Bismillah, when he wears clothes. Bismillah, when he eats. When he's, he always remembers Allah. That's why I'm like this. And the other one is fat. You say, oh, this man, he doesn't say anything. That's why I'm like this. So every time, this is, I've interpreted a lot of dreams. Every time the person sees whatever is there, either very slim, in a state of dying, meaning he's doing a lot of adhkars and remembrance of Allah. And whatever is there is going slowly, slowly dying. And if it's an opposite, it becomes stronger. Yeah. So the man said that he doesn't believe he's a human being and he took it out. How did he manage to take it out? So I, th I think um, uh, he just had grabbed him from his arm. I remember All right. he walked him out and he, 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 he from there he had left. Mm, subhanallah. We ask Allah to protect us and ask Allah to make it easy for all of you. <sighs> it's very difficult situation, isn't it? Yeah, very, very difficult to say. Now, how is your dad and how are you is he still home so he had left um for about three four months and um, what was the reason behind him leaving um mm. basically my mom had decided that it's best for him to kind of go depart mm. he recently he has um come back when i came back from a holiday um because um, a lot of family members had got involved and and they said give him another chance and stuff like that so how can you give a sahir another chance yeah, 
but if that's something we can't tell them that he's doing, they, they won't. No, but you should not agree for him to be there. I told, I had told my mum, but she, 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 uh, I'd let him come back. Um, so, I don't, so he's there now. Yeah, it's a difficult situation. It's a, yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> Is your mom okay though? Because these these decisions you don't make it light like that. Yeah. You make a decision based on Islamic uh, yeah. ground. You cannot sleep with somebody who is not worshiping Allah. And the worst is that the person seeks help from the jinn, from their shayateen. And it's not that you've been told. You have evidence after evidence. It's a, it's a I remember you told me that he says he's a magician himself, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, one time there was a, I think it was a... Um, wedding, you wedding, said. Wedding, yeah. birthday party, yeah, or, or, yeah, yeah. Like, it was a long time ago, maybe maybe about 10, 15 years ago. And um, they, the at the venue, they had a, you know, those magicians that card tricks, coin tricks mm -hmm. for children that they usually bring. And, and um, he tried doing a coin trick um, on my dad and my dad um, shook his hand and he said, I'm a bigger magician than you are. And then the guy got, he, he got a bit scared. It was like, what's going on? And at the time, we, we just thought it was a joke. But now, yeah, realize realize that that um, all these things um, they make sense. Mm. It's adding up. Yeah. Mm. And and then it, and even before this, like my they, my dad used to uh, tell my mum like um, stories of like you know because he does taxi and he said one time he was driving and this man he he uh, jumped in the back seat and uh, my dad was driving and by a forest and. Um, he just got out of the car and he started walking into the forest. Some random passenger, I don't know. Like he just used to st tell like very strange. Oh yeah, so he just went, took him to the forest and then he, stopped. My dad said he was driving and the man said stop outside the forest. And then my dad stopped and the man, he um, he got out of the car and he just started walking into the forest. And he was a big man, like similar ex description to the guy. Mm, okay. And then he was a bit, he used to tell like strange stories like that to my Yeah, what more stories can you explain? Mm, more? After that, um, a, more, a few more stories after that would be like, one of that I remember is that when we were like little kids, um, my dad used to say that um, um, one, one time, you know, in Pakistan, he was he was a kid and uh, like he was maybe a teenager and he was walking and he saw some, he met something and uh, the thing said that your children, they will be very uh, educated people when they get older and stuff like that. Like just strange stories that, yeah, yeah, yeah. like he was used to tell us when we were kids, but now when you get older they kind of make sense mm. i don't know like it's just um, strange. he's behind something isn't it yeah and i think he's he's probably been um, um doing this um, from a young age i think yeah tell me about the house you're living in how is the state of the house because if you have a magician the house doesn't look clean there must be part of the house would be absolutely so, so his room is absolutely the filled filtered like it, it was not it was not nice um um, so when he had left, we had um, got rid of the bed, we painted the room, we um, we had cleaned it up because it was not nice, it was you know, filth. Um, but the room was um, dirty. It, it, it's, it's got nothing to do with the, uh, what is it called, mold or yeah. fungus or yeah, no? Nothing. So there, there was a bit of fungus in the corners as well, and it, but it was just filth, it was just dirty. Um, from himself? From himself, yeah. Wow. It was just dirty and... and um, a, How is he himself? Is he a clean man or a dirty man? Uh, a bit of both. A bit of both. So like whenever when he's going to uh, weddings and stuff like that, very clean. But it's not. It's just. Uh, he's dirty man. Oh, may Allah make it easy for you, young man. It's it's a tough one, isn't it? Yeah, it's mm. but, uh, particularly at the moment, because if the man who is behind all this evil and he is yeah. just right next door. And he's an enemy, clear enemy, not only to you, to Allah Rabbul Izzah. I believe he doesn't pray. I don't think so. Not, not that I've seen. Yeah. Him. It's crazy. It's very, very madness. And then um, um, also that we went Pakistan, I think it was 2015, 16. And um, um, we went to this um, medicine shop because I used to be very skinny. I was all underweight. So we went mm -hmm. to this medicine shop and... and um, the guy in the um, shop had, uh, um, he said to me, um, 
I can help, you know, give you some medicine, you'll put on some weight or whatever. And this was before we knew about it, that's why. Mm. Maybe they, he's helping me, I don't know. The time. And then the man, he, it was a bit strange because he had asked me, he, he wanted to give me medicine for my, you know, my, my digest, my stomach or whatever. Mm. But then he would ask me for my mum's name and my grandma's name. Yeah, he was doing magic on you. Yeah, it was, mm. it was strange. And, and the thing is, is that he had a beard. And he had a muscat, so he looked like he was practicing. Yeah, but this doesn't. There's there's a lot of people who have beard, and who had uh, jubbas and everything, and they are oppressors, oppressing. Allah says, We've made them imam who are calling people to hellfire. So do not be deceived. Allah says again in Surah Al-Baqarah, We ask Allah to protect us from that verse. You see human being, they say they believe, but they are not believers. So do not be deceived by him having beard and topi. Do not. Look at the speech. Look at the speech. Analyze the speech of that person. Does that make sense? I know people who are engaging in oppression, highest level oppression. I know people who are engaging in highest level of uh, uh, sins. And these people claim to be... Uh, having beard and everything you have to run away from these people ask Allah to protect us from these type of people and make us stay away from these type of people because it's easy for them to deceive you very very easy and then he had given me the medicine or whatever <clears throat> we just came back to the UK and yeah. I told you I, I, to, I remember you told me about dreams you used to have that used to have uh, dirty dreams and used to feel so much pain. Can you elaborate a little bit so, about that? So, um, I used to kind of like have um, um, wet dreams. Yeah. Um, when I probably was, and they, they mainly started when I was probably 16. Mm, subhanallah. So I had started college mm. and I used to have these dreams and the dreams were, they used to always happen at three o'clock in the morning. Mm. Some, sometimes maybe straight right after Fajr as well. And um, the dreams, I, every time it happened, a wet dream I'd have I'd feel uh, um, like I'm getting a temperature straight away like a temperature I'd feel tired um, I couldn't go back to sleep um, stuff like that and then even during the day I would have temperatures like I remember when I was 16 um, when I was at the time I would I'd have a temperature every single day for like two weeks mm-hmm. and um, I just feel ill all the time and, and I used to just have these um, uh, you know wet dreams like mm. once every two days three days sometimes every day and you used to feel pain as well yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. all over the body yeah. in the private part yeah, and uh, yeah. Yeah. we ask a lot to protect us we ask a lot to make it easy for you how is that is that gone um it's gone away now i don't really have that much but, alhamdulillah um, i did have um one, uh, one experience that i think i told you about in september when i was in when i was gone for umrah um, um i just had an um, experience where i had sleep paralysis oh yeah yeah, yeah. And, um, um, i had a doll that was um fly, like floating mm. um, and it was a scary one and it was floating and it was pointing that way and screaming and then i could feel um um something um uh, going inside you no doing no no like on top of me Ora. Like, uh, it was a, definitely a female Ora. and it was um, obviously doing what it was doing and, and it was um, hurting as well at the same time okay what what dream yeah. Yeah. it was a wet dream because i woke up right before it okay subhanallah ask Allah to make it easy for you this is ashq jinn ashq jinn are very bad why is it called ashq jinn this is a big question a lot of people have different ideas inshallah i will elaborate this in a video on my own why is it called ashq jinn why do they do this and all that uh, ask Allah to make it easy for you and for whoever you love and whoever is closer to you and whoever is your friend ask Allah to Remove all evil that is approaching you or is coming to you or is near you. You and your family and protect you from the enemy that was just right next door, which is your dad. Jazakallah khair for coming and giving your time doing this podcast because it will help a lot. Even though there's a lot to talk, inshallah, we'll decide to do part two next time, inshallah, uh, when Allah, whenever Allah wills. وآخر دعوانا وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين حتى يتبين لهم أنه الحق